Anyway, um, Brother Neil here is going to do the story time and scripture reading combination. And uh, I'm going to turn that over to him. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. And and this is my third Shabbat with all of you. I kind of feel like one of them dogs in the window. I'm going, yes, Tom, yes, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> listen, I I've had a wonderful time down here. It's almost been two and a half weeks. And and uh, I, I need to share with you just briefly some of the things going on. But before I do that, okay, before I do that, I have to tell you guys about um, some friends and some shout outs. My first one's going to be to Papa Huff Daddy. Um, for those of you that don't know him, his name is David Huffines. He is uh, the proud grandfather now of a bouncing little baby and uh, from his oldest son or second oldest son and Mason and Brittany uh, and he is he snuck down rather than come to here or to Iowa he snuck down to some place in Alabama now why would anybody go to Alabama Smith Station I think is where he's at to another brother Shaul Lahore now, there's a pair that you need to be careful of watching because they'll probably get you down and pray for you and, and see you get healed and that you're walking with Yahweh. Two precious brothers. So I want to say Shabbat Shalom to you guys down there. I know they're at Mary's house, so Mary and the children, blessings to you all. And then I have to send my apologies to Iowa, to Delapsville. I had originally estimated that I would be going back to Iowa on, um, let's see, that would have been fifth day. However, I didn't make it. There were other things that Yahweh wanted me to do, and I got involved in that. But I do plan on leaving in the morning and spending uh, um, uh, tomorrow night with the Arnolds up by Bates City, Missouri, and then moving back on, should be home on second day. But... <clears throat> I do want to personally ask the following people to forgive me. First of all, Gabriel, the, the father of my grandchildren, uh, the husband of my daughter. Sorry, I'll get there. I will get back. And to my daughter, I've been very good. I have watched everything I've eaten from the plate to my mouth. To make <laughs> <laughs> uh, no crumbs. But I've been eating pretty good. We have a wonderful cook. Um, down at the um, coffee shop that, that prepares unbelievable food. Marge is just unbelievable. And then there's Silas, or I'm going to start off with Shiloh. Shiloh Elijah. Shiloh is my um, gamer. And I'm talking about board games. Shiloh is 12, and he is so good at most of these games that he beats everybody. Um, I won't play chess with him. And it's getting to the point where I'm not going to play checkers with him anymore either because he whips on me really, really bad. And then there's, there's uh, Silas Gabriel. He is a true acronym of his name. He is a woodsman. Um, he is my Mr. Fix-It. Um, after he breaks it, he fixes it. <laughs> now, he is a precious young man who is uh, learning his father's business. Um, Excellent, excellent worker. Just love him to pieces. And then there's Tiptoe Tilly. That's uh, Lily Zapora. She is uh, the spitting image of her mama. She is always there to help. She cooks. Uh, all the children do laundry. Uh, they're just, what a blessing that she is. She got the nickname Tiptoe Tilly because she always, when she was younger, always walked on her tiptoes. So I called her Tiptoe Tilly. And uh, then after that comes uh, Sam the Man Levi, or Samuel Levi. Sam, I, I believe, is just turned six or about to turn six. I, and he is, you know, a six-year-old wrapped up thinking he's 12 because he's out there struggling with the older boys all of the time uh, when he <laughs> gets those shoulders going and running. And he just, he's, he, what a card. He is... It's the apple of my eye. And then there's the Zim Master, or the Ziminator, Zimri David, who is, well, he's just Zimri. 
uh, marches to his own drum. Um, what a blessing he is. And then is little Mimi, or Hadassah Hope. Uh, what a blessing she is to the family. And, and the nickname Mimi comes from uh, whenever something was to be done and she wanted to do it, she'd say, Mimi, Mimi, Mimi. So we just called her Mimi. And uh, she, what a precious young lady she is. And, and as Lily trains her in a lot of things and her mama trains her, she's also going to be a lovely young lady. So to all of you, please forgive me. I am working my way back to you, babe. So I'll be there uh, sooner than later. Um, <clears throat> and I need to say something about what I'm doing down here. Um, I, I am honored to be a part of this ministry. And as an elder, I, I pray over a lot of stuff and I pray for people. I've never had such an opportunity for ministry as I have had down here. Um, and you can imagine any type, and we've prayed for them, and we've helped them, given them food, not only spiritually, but physically. Um, if, if anybody out there wants to belong to ministry or get involved in ministry, come down and see what we're doing. Um, we have the coffee house, True Brew. We have True View of, of the building that we're in now. That's the theater. And uh, then we have the... Um, uh, clothing store, which will open shortly, of which we can help the people in the community that can't afford to, to buy clothes. You know, they can come into the thrift store and, and get things. So the ministry down here is going very, very well. But if anyone wants to be a part of that, come on and, and be a part. If Even if it's just an hour or 30 minutes, um, we, can, we can use the volunteers. You'll be blessed abundantly from our Father. Uh, because it is just a tremendous time of opportunity, a tremendous time to come and know a lot of people and get to know other brothers and sisters. There are a lot of believers down here. I mean a ton of them. And I've had the opportunity to meet many of them, and I'm just truly, truly blessed by all that's going on down here. So uh, with that's about all I have to say about that, and I stick by my story. So what I want to get into now is story time with Papo. And if you recall, Yahweh's on the mountain talking to uh, Moshe. And he's given him his instructions about the, uh, his tabernacle. Now, I want you to really pay attention, to, especially you children, about what's, what he's saying today. Because he's going to say some things that, that I believe you need to hear. A lot of people say, well, what am I going to be and what do I want to do or what's Yahweh want me to be? Let me read this to you so you can, you can see that. We're in the the 31st chapter of Exodus. And it starts off, I apologize, I can't look into the camera because I don't have scriptures up there. I've got to look down, so bear with me. It says, And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, See, I have called by name Bestel, son of Uri, son of Hur, the tribe of Yehuda. And I have, now listen to this, listen to how important this is. I have filled him with the spirit of Elohim in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all work, to make designs for work in gold and silver and in bronze, and in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood, and to work in all work. You see, the Father gave him that. He spoke to him and gave, he blessed him with that ability for a long time, because he knew that he would be needed down the road. So he blessed him with that early. And I, look, I have appointed him with Ahabah, son of Azmach, of the tribe of Dan. And I put wisdom in the hearts of everyone who is wise-hearted. And they shall make all that I have commanded you, the tent of appointment, and the ark of the witness, and the lid of the atonement that is on it, and all the utensils of the tent, and the table and its utensils, and the clean gold lampstand with all its utensils, and the slaughter place of incense, and the slaughter place of ascending offering with all its utensils, and the basins and its stand, and the woven garments, and the set apart garments for Haran, the priest, and the garments of his sons for serving the priest, and the anointing oil and the sweet incense for the set apart place. According to all that I have commanded you, they are to do. Now think about this. He has given all these people the ability to do this. 
And it just he just didn't do it at the drop of a hat. He did that a long time ago, and those people had this trade, and they were the best at it because he knew that he would need them, and he gifted them with this a long time ago. So listen, children, Yahweh's already gifting you for what he's called you to. Open yourself up and learn to do and listen to what he has to say because we have no idea where we're going to be. Never once did I think I would be here now in a place like this for a time such as this. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, And you speak to the children of Israel, saying, My Sabbath you are to guard by all means, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations to know that I am Yahweh. I am setting you apart. Very, very important verses. That the sign that he loves us is our Sabbath. And that he is our Elohim. And he is setting us apart. He doesn't want us to be like the world. He's setting us apart. He wants us to be different so that we can praise and worship him. And you shall guard the Sabbath, for it shall set, be set apart to you. Everyone who profanes it shall certainly be put to death. For anyone who does not work on it, that shall be cut off from among his people. Six days' work is done. And on the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, set apart to Yahweh. Everyone doing work on the Sabbath day shall certainly be put to death. And the children of Israel shall guard the Sabbath to perform the Sabbath throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. In case you don't know, everlasting means forever. Okay? Everlasting covenant. Between me and the children of Israel, it is a sign forever. That's you and me. It's our sign forever. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And when he had ended speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moshe two tablets of the witness, tablets of stone written with the finger of Elohim. Now just for a moment, I want you to, to, to be there with Moshe and understand all that is going on. I, I, I mean, this is phenomenal. It's incredible what's happening. I mean, not only did he talk about Aaron and, and all of that stuff that Aaron was to wear and how he was to wear and what it was for, and, and now, now he's, he's telling Moses about the guys that he's already picked out that have all this talent, that already have his spirit in them, and they know what to build. They know what to build. Moses doesn't have to go down to this, this list and say, okay, here, here's the design of all this stuff. According to what the scripture says, they already knew what they had to do. That's a lot, guys. Think about that. So when you think that, you know, there's no hope or you just don't have any idea what Yahweh wants to do, pick this up and read through the 31st verse, 31st chapter of Exodus to understand that Yahweh's already made you and he's already developed and put in you tools that he wants you to use. It's incredible. I, every time I go through the book of Exodus, I'm just amazed to see what Yahweh has done for all of us, each and every one of us. Okay, so let's let's pray. And we're going to be in uh, Psalms. Who would have thought, huh? And we're going to read out of Psalms 45 today. Now, I want to tell you that Psalms 45 is talking about Yahshua. And I want you to write these on your heart to understand him and to know him, and to see what it is he is and what he is for us. Hallelujah. So, Father, I just thank you for this time with your people. Father, I just lift up your word to them as I read this prayer. Psalms 45. My heart is overflowing with a goodly word. I address my works to the sovereign. My tongue is the pen of a speedy writer. You are more handsome than the sons of men. Favor has been poured upon your lips. Therefore, Elohim has blessed you forever. Gird your sword upon your thigh, O oh, mighty one, your excellency and your splendor, and ride prosperously to your splendor. On the matter of truth and humility and righteousness, and let your right hand lead you to awesome matters. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the sovereign's enemies. People fall under you. 
Your throne, O Elohim, is forever and forever. The scepter of your reign is the scepter of straightness. You have loved righteousness and hated wrongness. Therefore, Elohim, your Elohim has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. All your garments are myrrh and aloe and kasa, out of the places of ivory. Stringed instruments have made you glad. Daughters of sovereigns are running, your precious ones. At your right hand stands the sovereignness of gold from afar. Listen, O daughter, and see, and incline your ear, and forget your own people and your father's house, and let the sovereign delight in your loveliness, because he is your master. Bow yourself to him. And the daughter of Zorro, with a gift, the rich among the people, seek your favor. The daughter of the sovereign is all esteemed within the palace. Her dress is embroidered with gold. She is brought to the sovereign embroidered work. Maidens, her companions following her, are brought to you. They are brought with gladness and rejoicing. They enter the sovereign's place. Instead of your fathers are your sons whom you have appointed princes in all the earth. I cause your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, the people praise you forever and ever. Hallelujah. Father, we do praise you forever and ever, for you are our Elohim. You are the first and the last. You are the Alpha and the Omega. Father, I thank you for what you have started here with your people. Father, I thank you that what you have started in every single person's life. Father, I thank you that you guide us and that you direct us and that you strengthen us and encourage us in all that we do. Father, let us look unto you, the author and the finish of our lives, to see what it is you have called us for at this time. For you have, all cre you have created us all for a time such as this. Father, there are many things that are going on in all our lives. Feast, famine, pestilence. Father, they're all there. We look around, as our brother Tom said about, I mean, look at what the world's involved in, and it is nothing. But, Father, we look to see what it is you are involved in. You love your people. You have sent many to come and to work and to labor for your people. For, Father, we know that the fields are ripe and the harvests are few. Therefore, we need to press on. Father, as you call your people, I ask that they do according to your will, that they will walk uprightly and they will help wherever you send them and whatever you call them to. Father, for those that that are oppressed today. Father, I ask that you put your hand on them, that you give them strength and that you encourage them for those that are sick and afflicted. Father, I just speak healing by the virtuous power of your set-apart spirit to go through their, their body and just let them know that you, the Elohim of Israel, are setting them free. Father, I ask that you would guide us, that you would strengthen us, you would encourage us in all that we do. And from coast to coast, border to border, and all about this vast blue globe that you have given us to live on, we all lift up our hands in unison and shout unto you, Hallelujah! Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Shabbat Shalom, my friends. Yahweh bless and keep you all.